So the political persecution and prosecution of former President Donald Trump is in full swing. And they just uh, came to it as uh, the corrupt judge, corrupt attorney general, or a prosecutor. Is she the attorney general, Letitia, Letitia James? James? She's a prosecutor. She's just a prosecutor. And Isn't that creepy ass judge. And they they prosecuted him for they say he inflated the value of, of a property he owned so he could get a bank loan. You know, <laughs> to think the thing that is standard it's like if I called capitalism. It's called capitalism. If I'm trying to sell a car, I I put the price high and then we negotiate down. Just like so what Trump did was he put the price high and the bank came in and they negotiated him down and they came to a agreement. He got the loan. He paid the loan back to the bank. They made a healthy profit. The bank made a healthy profit. <laughs> and also, there's no he victim. didn't exaggerate even if you the, look up the prices right there, of the, the... But the, tr the, the, the bank even said they would go back. They would like to do business with him again. Yeah. So this is a victimless crime. It's not even a crime. And you got a corrupt judge and a corrupt prosecutor. This is what I thought they did in Banana Republics, but the United States is a Banana Republic since they elected Donald Trump, a guy who didn't want to do foreign wars. That's all it took. And you're saying that I have to vote for his political enemy to to save democracy? Democracy's out the window. And what the New York Post is saying, it says Dem elites shouldn't be laughing at Trump's civil trial outcome. They just made him a political martyr. What do you mean just? <laughs> The two fuck bullshit impeachments did that, plus that crazy lady civil trial and Russiagate. He's been I mean, a, he's been a martyr for a while. I I never even liked him on any level, and now I think he's funny because you. That's right. Him so much. That's right. You know who agrees with me? Jamie Dimon from Chase. <laughs> so here's what the New York Post says. Was there ever a more predictable outcome than that of Donald Trump's civil trial? Attorney General Letitia James. She's the attorney general came yeah. into office vowing to punish him and ignore all other crimes. Judge Arthur Engerin found him guilty before anyone even said he was guilty before they even started the trial. Jesus, that judge looks like the punishment if you're bad at Christmas in some Norwegian countries. Yes. He shows up. It was all over but the punishment, a $355 million fine and a three-year ban from running a business in New York. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so... Here's what so now business people because that's because what Trump what they're accusing Trump of doing is called normal business. Right. And so now they're prosecuting Trump for doing normal real estate business. So now most people are afraid that if they run afoul of the establishment in New York, they will also be used in the uh, they'll corrupt the justice system yeah. to make them criminal. I've been telling people this. I tried to explain it to numbskull Cornel West when he was on my show, Do but you he's think he too knows about business. But he's too big of an ivory tower, a hypocrite, and and and, uh, and pussy. I'll just say a guy who lives on grants. You're a guy who lives business right, to him. right. Um, to to admit what was going on right in front of his face. Cornel West doesn't have the stones of a YouTuber to tell the truth about that. They're even if it's happening to your political enemy, it would happen to Cornell West if he ever actually did oppose the establishment in any meaningful way. They would criminalize him, too. But he knows he'll never do that, which is why he pretended he didn't see what was happening. So this, again, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not going to vote for Trump. But I see what's happening. They would do this to Bernie Sanders if he stood up. They would do this to uh, Cornell West, if he stood up, they will do this to anybody who stands up against the establishment, just like they did to uh, uh, Edward Snowden, just like they're doing to uh, Julian Assange. This is what the establishment does. And now people in New York who are actual businessmen don't want to do business in New York anymore because they're afraid if if the establishment gets pissed off at them, they're going to do what they did to Trump to them. And so the the governor of New York had to give a statement Reassuring people that, no, 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 we're just doing fake political prosecutions of Donald Trump. And here's how she That's said it. That's reassuring. She goes, I understand that the Trump ruling might make New York business people fearful, but this is really an extraordinarily unusual circumstance. Yeah, because the establishment, the military industrial complex, wants to prosecute him and criminalize him so they can get their war money going. It's, this is an extraordinary, unusual circumstance that the law-abiding, rule-following New Yorkers who are business people have nothing to worry about until you cross the establishment. Which could happen at any moment. Which could happen at any moment. Just say that you don't like this prosecution, and they'll come after hey, you. You remember Occupy Wall Street? Uh, yes. They took that real... 
Now, it might look like some smelly hippies, but the business people took that so seriously that life went straight downhill after that. If That's you right. Recall. They've been. You think they don't take this seriously? That's right. So, she. So that's what the that's what the governor said. Uh, and it is. This is very different. I like how she says this is a very. It's it's an extraordinarily unusual. Yeah, it's different because we hate Trump. So you don't have to worry that we weaponize the law to go after a guy we don't like. We probably never do that again. <laughs> as long as the establishment likes you. Yeah. So it's like canceling as uh, finally, you, you know, what's unusual about this is how clumsily and obvious uh, and how obvious it is. Like it, it used to be not quite as or maybe I, it, I could just see it better. I don't know. Maybe I just dumb the whole time, but I don't remember it being this openly this is just blatant right out yeah, in the open like, and so here's a guy kevin o'leary goes on cnn i can't believe they brought him on because kevin o'leary even when a, a scumbag like kevin o'leary is going to be on your side i don't know i don't want to call him a scumbag i do that's the guy that uh promoted ftx don't you oh that? my god that's right. He said he would still do business with ftx guy and he, he crosses the line at this and but this that, yeah that's how bad it is even Kevin O'Leary has something to say about He'll it. He'll never go do business in New York, right. but he will do business with the FDX that's how Well, that's how yeah. scary it is yeah. for businessmen. Watch what he says. All this in an appeal, which I think it should be appealed. Um, he'll work hard to raise it. I think he can do it. But I, what I, I don't think this case is about Trump anymore at all, because you heard the governor of New York come out yesterday and say, look, everybody, uh, don't be scared about doing a business in New York. Uh, because the only people we prosecute are people like Donald Trump who don't behave well. That didn't go over very well with the investment community because we're all asking each other, who's next? This was a victimless crime. Nobody lost any money. And a judge out of nowhere put on a $355 million penalty. I mean, who's next? So if you well, think Kevin, about before I, I don't want to cut you off, but I hear about the, the so-called victimless crimes, but the laws on the books, falsification of business records and second degree issuing false. I, I, I love this argument, but he broke laws. Then <laughs> I didn't know we were prosecuting past presidents because they broke laws. You know, Barack Obama's a war criminal. Every president in my lifetime is a war criminal. George Bush ordered a torture program that was worldwide, and he didn't get prosecuted. Barack Obama said it's better for everyone if we don't prosecute the torture the we torture did. The torture we did. But this law, but I don't even believe he broke, by the way, Which, I don't believe He didn't break a law. Yeah, I, I don't believe it at all. But now all of a sudden, it's about the rule of law, Kurt. Okay, here yeah. we go statements, insurance fraud, conspiracy, and all these different aspects of it. Those are actual crimes. I take it your point is that these should not have been prosecuted? Well, my point is there's never been a case like this in 75 years. Everything you just listed off is done by every <laughs> real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. This has never, ever been prosecuted. But here's the real point that people in New York should concern themselves with. You can put your money anywhere. I'm a real estate developer. Do you think there's a chance I would ever take a chance on New York again? New York is turning itself into a flyover state. I have to build data centers now. I'm not going to go to New York. New York has power. It's got fiber optics. It's got Niagara Falls. But no, we're not even thinking about it. We're going to places that have the exact same thing where we have rational governors that have never done this to investors. This is about New York and its people. If I were in New York today and I was living there, I would ask myself, maybe we should hire better management. Why is this happening to us? Why are we becoming a flyover state? Why are well, investors Kevin, concerned about putting when, their money there? But shouldn't you ask, that, wouldn't, wouldn't those people also be saying, first of all, I do wonder how many people take issue with the idea that every investor is engaged in falsifying business records, that every oh investor is engaged in what has been accused of Donald Trump and the Trump. That's like saying, I would. I think people take issue that every used car salesman actually tries to inflate the price of the car before he negotiates down. I don't think, I think they give you the first fair price first thought, but this is crazy. Well, media people are very stupid, a lot of them, and they don't know anything about business. So she just heard that capitalism might be corrupt now. <laughs> <laughs> she can't believe it. And you should listen to this scumbag guy from Shark Tank because people that are way into money, that's all they look at. That's all. Well, what is my investment? 
I can't even say it's bad to think that way because why wouldn't you if you know the state can abuse the law to go after you and you're already a scumbag because you work in real estate. That's right. Real estate is the is the slimiest one of the slimiest professions out there. Now, by the way, all the all the rent might come down in New York because of this. I swear to God, because all the foreign uh -huh. investment that yes. is artificially keeping it, which you know that's that'd be a good thing for me if I lived in New York, but it wouldn't be a good for New York having to pay for all well, these illegal aliens now. They already have like something like a forty-two percent unused occupancy yeah. in business. Yeah, Tim Dillon told me a while ago. Yeah, how it they're works. they're hurting in New I York. Why the housing crash not affect rent here at yeah. all? And it turns out because foreign investors have just bought up all the properties. That's right. Yeah. Organization, because there's probably a lot who are saying to themselves, I've never falsified my business records. I know what a square foot looks like. I know what, where I can. What? The fine. But it's weird you didn't find one of those people. Yeah. Isn't it weird she didn't find a successful real estate person who said, I never did what Trump did? Because no, I'm sure if they, they all hold up in court. Because if they could, uh, they would have brought them in. <laughs> but why, why wouldn't you bring them in? You bring in Kevin O'Leary. Here we go ask for and what I have the money to support. So I, I wonder to what extent that really is true. But on the second point, wouldn't there be many companies who would not want to do business or loan money to people like yourself or investors if they know that they can get away with fraud and there's no recourse to protect them? Excuse me, what fraud? I don't, I, this is not about Trump anymore. When you <laughs> I know. get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building, and he says it's worth $400 million and he wants to borrow $200 million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on earth, including every American city. Every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth four hundred. The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case, because they're very good at it. The banks are very good. And they say, no, it's worth three hundred. We're only going to loan you $150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then... In this case, even the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for three hundred fifty five million. And we're going to do that. Let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking <laughs> about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think how there how are people to, who would, I don't want to cut you off. but well, I, you I want, are. Converse well, with you, you and you said, just did. I, it's, it's only because I want <laughs> to have a conversation, you know Kevin, as opposed you, to just you, having you tell me. I respect you because you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You understand well, exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, she's a scumbag. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm respectable for a number of reasons, Kevin O'Leary, but being a, law, a lawyer is one of those issues. What? But I'll tell you. Wait, when what? I, She's respectable for a number of well, issues. Well, being a lawyer is one of them. What is that? <laughs> what the hell did I just watch? I don't know what that even means. <laughs> And but so this so my Manhattan has gone from the financial hub of the Western world to being a national urine sample submitted for drug testing. That's yeah. what this is. I I thought she was <laughs> stupid, but she's actually a lawyer. So that means she's knowingly she's just knowing lying. she's on purpose being stupid. That's yes. really something. Yeah, here we go. When I hear your conversation, I do want to converse with you about this point. I understand that there are legitimate concerns that were raised during the trial and will continue to be raised about who the quote unquote, what, who is actually bringing the suit? It wasn't the banks who were saying that we as consumers are unsophisticated feel this way, but Letitia James, the attorney general, and I know you want to expand beyond Trump, has suggested, well, it's about making the playing field level for those who are not the major and billionaire investors, but for those who are supposed to put business records out there, want to get a loan, the idea of making sure that they have to have the same true statements included as those who have a lot more money. Is there any weight to that for you? Mm. Well, I ask you who lost money and I make it even clearer. You and I, we're developing a data center together. And I say to you, we can go to New York where this just happened. It's your money now. You're now an investor and you're taking risk. You're an entrepreneur with me right beside me. We're together on the deal. Or I can show you Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, where the governors actually ran businesses. Let's go there where this never happened before. They have power. They have permits. 
They've got legislation that's supportive of entrepreneurship. Why would we go to New York? Why take the risk? My only point is, did we just diminish the great state of New York and the great people of New York? Yes. And shouldn't they ask for better management so they don't become a flyover state? Remember- and, and the answer is, she knows that it's true what he's saying. She does know. It's good playing dumb, though, I guess. But say. she is playing dumb. New York has the highest taxes in the country, the worst regulatory environment, and it's incredibly mismanaged. And I'm pointing out now, on top of that, you get this insanity, a a victimless crime. And forget about Trump. It's not about Trump. I don't care about Trump in this. I care about America and I care about entrepreneurship and I care about democracy and the fairness of. The judicial system is now being criticized. People are asking themselves, the bar of New York, is this judge rational to charge $355 million in a case where no one lost any money? Is that good for the people of New York? Should the people of New York wake up to this and say, what's happening to us? Why is this becoming so perverse? Why are we the focus of this injustice? And I had nothing to do with Trump. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm supporting American entrepreneurship. And New York is slowly becoming the number one loser state in America. I'm sorry. That's what's happening. And so now they're not going to get the business investment that he's actually talking about. He actually knows what he's talking about in that. First of all, try to get another Shark Tank in New York. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but, well, second yeah. all, but second of all, um, New York desperately needs that kind of money investment because where else they didn't get their money to give um, to, to build community centers for migrants? Yeah, they've they've got a flood of them now. Yes, the only reason New York could get away with this bullshit is because a bunch of rich people would just mindlessly invest their money in there because it's New York. I mean, how do you manage to pull that off? Where the rich dickheads that support your stupidity, you chase them out of your state. They're utterly chased out now. Kevin O'Leary again, a guy that would work with Sam Bankman Fried again, won't, won't, won't touch New York. Won't touch New York. <laughs> wow. Hey, come see us live on tour in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Berlin, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, right outside Pittsburgh, El Paso, and San Antonio, Texas. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. (laughs) 